Welcome back to my rubber heart. Today we are unpacking a topic that doesn't get enough spotlight, yet affects both appearance and performance of rubber compounds. Peroxide blooming. When peroxide bloom shows up as a chalky white deposit, you might wonder if your cure is off, if there's excess peroxide, or if something's unstable in the batch. Let's explore why peroxide bloom really is, why it shows up more in some polymers than others, and what you can do about it. It all starts with how peroxides cure rubber. Unlike sulfur systems that form sulfur bridges, peroxide curing relies on organic peroxides decomposing under heat to generate free radicals. Those radicals abstract hydrogen from polymer chains, creating carbon-centered radicals that cross-link via carbon-carbon bonds. In many rubbers, especially unsaturated ones, Peroxides create clean, strong networks that resist heat and environmental aging. But these same peroxides and their breakdown remains can also migrate to the surface when they are not fully consumed. Polymers where peroxide bloom is more likely include EVA, silicone rubber, EPDM, and even blends like EPDM silicone. That is because these rubbers or their blends either don't fully engage all peroxide radicals or allow the heavy peroxide fragments to separate and rise. The peroxide molecules, or their larger fragments, reach saturation in the rubber core and begin diffusing to the surface. Once there, they crystallize, or just pile up, as a white gray bloom. Sometimes you will see crystalline hairs jutting out, especially with peroxides like BIPB. You will find peroxide bloom in peroxide-cured silicone o-rings, EPDM gaskets, and especially in peroxide cure blends or unreinforced elastomers, materials where fillers and other compounds aren't tying up the peroxide fragments in the network. So what causes it? Three main drivers. Too much peroxide, uneven cure, or too soft compound. Excess peroxide leads to unused fragments. Poor mixing can leave pockets of fragments that more easily migrate. And the soft rubber matrix, or one with low filler content, gives molecules room to travel. Even storage at higher temperatures or uneven curing, these accelerate diffusion. So how can you tell if that bloom is peroxide and not something else? If wiping with alcohol or solvent doesn't remove it and it reappears quickly, that's a sign it's crystalline peroxide fragment rather than wax, which is melted away by solvent. You could also analyze the bloom using FTIR or energy dispersive X-ray to look for peroxide-specific byproducts like diisopropinol benzene. How can you prevent or eliminate peroxide bloom? First, avoid excess peroxide. Use just enough to hit your crosslink density. Second, improve mix and cure uniformity. Adequate temperature, time, and, and thorough dispersion help. Adding fillers or reinforcing agents also limits diffusion by binding fragments. You might also include anti-blooming agents. Things like polyoxyethylene steryl ether or phthalic anhydride aren't antioxidants per se, but help trap peroxide byproducts in the bulk matrix. Post-cure treatments like washing, heating at 120 to 150 degrees, or solvent wiping can remove surface bloom, but may only delay reblooming. The key is balancing functionality and aesthetics. In seals or additives, you want clean surfaces for bonding and appearance. In general industrial parts, a bit of bloom isn't harmful. If you are designing a peroxide-cured EPDM hose that will join liners or coats, controlling bloom is essential to prevent adhesion problems. At the end of the day, peroxide bloom is a telltale sign. It means the chemistry is overloaded or the system isn't locked in tightly enough. It can be managed through control of peroxide dosing, processing conditions, fillers, and dedicated anti-bloom additives. And if it does show up, you can wipe or post-cure, but ideally you prevent it before it even becomes visible. And that is the subtle science, right between chemistry and quality, that keeps rubber looking good and functioning flawlessly. If you want to dive into FTIR spectra of peroxide blooms or learn which anti-bloom agents work best in silicone, just give us the word. Thanks for listening to my rubber heart. See you next time.